Um, so we're, we followed suit as well, and our nurses are no longer requiring that negative test or uh, a required quarantine if you're coming back from any of the United States. Um, Maine said they will update their page with any uh, states of concern, so we continue to monitor that to make sure that there's no states of concern. Um, and then for international travel, it will be still require the seven-day uh, quarantine period unless you're uh, vaccinated. If you're fully vaccinated, you do not have to quarantine after international travel, but they are recommending you do take a test and get a negative result. Okay. So those are the updates from the DOE. Okay, next we'll go to ESSER 2 application approval. So I did uh, send you all an email that our ESSER 2 application was approved and um, part of that ESSER 2 application was our hazard pay for um, staff members. I, I showed you a copy of the letter I would like to send out tomorrow morning to the staff members. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to, to read it. Uh, I did share it with my team beforehand as well so that we could just kind of make sure we're saying the right thing. Uh, basically what, what you offer to your, your employees is an extra week's worth of pay uh, based on what they typically, typically work. So for the teachers, it's um, you know five days pay because then, you know, they, they work five days in a week. For hourly employees, it's whatever they uh, typically work in a, in, a, in a week. If they work 32 hours, they're getting half of 32. If they work 40 hours, they're getting half of 40 so that they're essentially getting that one week pay. Uh, so hopefully the letter is, is good. Yep. And I have a, 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 a final copy here. I'm gonna pass so that you can all sign. I know we won't get all the signatures, but I would like to scan it and send it to the employees tomorrow morning. So if you all sign, I would appreciate it. And they should be getting that on their payroll for May 20th. Uh, so um, that would be the next. I do want to say thank you for working hard to try to find a way to do it. Um, I know sometimes it kind of sounds like it's the impossible, but I think we all came together and put our heads together and figured out a way. There's always a possible. Thank you. I have a question then. Yep. Uh, in the last year, uh, John Platt retiring, will he be getting this as a Yep. If he was doing this all year? Yep. Nope. So, no. Is It does not include um, people who are not employed directly by SAU 33. So if you have a shared staff from the say SAU 27 that works here part time, it does not include them. It only includes direct employees of SAU 33 that are being prepared. So that was like maybe OTCP? It doesn't include them. They're, they're, they're not employees? Right. Uh, it doesn't include the other. Uh, that's that's your office. Office. The administration. No, we don't work. We don't work for 33. And, and actually, there, there's there's language. We're not paid by directly by 33. You do work for 33. You don't get paid directly <laughs> by 33. Yeah. Um, and there's I think there was some language that we had discovered about executives not being able to, to get hazard pay anyway. Oh, okay. oh. We'll take hugs later when this is over. <laughs> <laughs> The sheets right here. So. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. okay. Uh, next, we'll go to the administrator's reports. And we received all the reports in our package, except um, we didn't originally have Kevin's, but we got it today. Yeah. yeah, it was sent to us. So, were there any questions on these reports? Oh. No. Okay. We'll continue to the committee reports. Negotiations were supposed to meet the previous time. We're going to be meeting this Thursday at 3 p.m. So we're going to be talking the language, which we hope will be not too long because we have done quite a bit prior to. And I know that things may have changed since last year, but hopefully a couple of meetings will wrap that up. Uh, we're meeting here, right? We're meeting here at 3 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. And we'll also be, we're also going to meet to discuss 
excuse me, salary scales with them because we only did last year's salary scale. Yeah. Uh, next on the agenda is old business and then to be collecting on the uh, yeah so we had a, we had a year to, to figure out you know what your needs are and, and really try to see uh, if our plan for this current year you know is, is sustainable and um, we're what we're finding out is with regards to our original plan of course was to have Anne Marie and, and uh, Vince Vaney both assist uh, in this district. Um, Vince Vaney was not unable to continue that, that responsibility. Um, so it, it, it's solely left, uh, you know, stuck with Anne Marie. Um, Anne Marie, and I, I know she's here back, but it, if, you, if you guys know what Anne Marie drives, she, her car is always the last to leave the parking lot at, uh, at, the, at, at her place of work. Um, and that's because she, 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 she's doing the extra hours and she's making sure that um, she's not impeding on SAP 27's time because she is fully employed there um, and, and, and doing your time uh, above and beyond that. Uh, it, it's difficult because when, whenever you're, you're dealing with a full-time employee of another district, you, you don't want to set up a perception that you might be stealing time from them you know, during the workday. So I had approached the SAP 27 board uh, to see if they would consider uh, allowing you all to contract uh, part of Andrew's time, and they, they said they would. They would consider that, and, and um, they know that you have that need there. Um, so what I'm proposing is that we, um, we, we this board, contract one fifth of Andrew's salary and benefits. Um, it's already included in the budget. Actually, it's a little less than what's included in the budget. Because if Amory does have to do some more overtime hours, there is a little bit of that as well. If the one fifth is not quite there for certain tasks, but in speaking with Amory, she feels that this will be a much more manageable workflow. She'll be feel feel very comfortable coming to work here for part of the time, working on site, and not having to worry about you know the perception of all that. So I'm hoping that you would consider um, consider you know, this as a as a proposal. Um, for next year. Is that what would be the cost? To, uh, well, what we put in the budget was $26,000. And that's salary and benefits. Um, but like I said, it's more than what this one fifth is. Okay. Just so you have a little bit extra in case you need. So what, what's the comparison to what we were paying for overtime hours? Like, what did we For this year? Yeah, let's, for like, this year? The stipend was going to be ten thousand five for each, but as Mr. Silva said, uh, Vince could not continue. So Anne Marie is keeping track of her time. I can tell you that the last time she checked, she's way over the amount of time that we actually stipend for. Um, she's dedicated and she's doing it, but we need to be careful of all employees' health. <laughs> so it was ten thousand in your current budget. Each for each of them. No, no. Five each. But I can't remember what it was for Scott when we did have uh, two or three days per week with Scott. I think we were closer to 30 plus, 30 plus, I think. But Are there any more questions? You know, I just want to add we had all anticipated a joint school. And I think everybody was working their tail off. In anticipation of that and putting in hours and, and and when you got hit with that roadblock it just reality hits we can't continue at this pace if there's no end to it i mean there's going to be attrition of staff there was going to be combination of jobs and and i think people were hanging on for that but at this point it's just too much so i'll entertain a motion to allow uh uh, and then and say these five seven uh to contract and to Saturday one fifth of the time. That's what she said. I think it could be an SAD thirty three to secure a contract. Yes, okay. yes, sorry. <laughs> so why do I have a motion? So Ryan? Second? Josh? Okay, any more questions? Okay, so I'll uh, we'll go to a vote in favor. 
none at all. Okay, under new business, um, okay, there's retirement. Yeah. I do have a uh, retirement notice that came to us last Friday. Um, right to this letter to inform you that I have decided to retire effective uh, July 31, 2021, which is essentially the end of the school year, uh, from my building as a building trades instructor at St. John Valley Tech. I've enjoyed my years uh, here at the Tech Center and I'm hopeful to spend some time substitute teaching in the future at Yale Vision. Okay, so we'll need a motion to accept this uh, letter of uh, resignation. I'll make a motion to accept the letter of resignation. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Any questions? Okay, no. We'll take a vote in favor. All in favor. Was that resignation or retirement? The retirement. The retirement. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay, resignation. We have no resignation. Okay, transfer. We have no transfer. Not new hire. We actually um, do not have a new hire take to tonight. Um, we, we're uh, still waiting for a response from uh, from an office. Okay. 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 So next on the agenda, well, we, we, have we, we do have one for the Wisdom Middle High School. Oh, okay, uh, that's right. I was just looking at the first one. <laughs> Um, and you should have a letter from uh, Mr. Fantasia. Uh, the selection committee is uh, recommending Mr. Alan Mornell for the position of bus driver custodian at Wisdom Middle High School. Uh, Mr. Mornell is a lifelong Valley resident who's been employed in the company industry for much of his last 25 years. He currently holds a commercial bus bus driver's license and will need to obtain his school bus driver's license. So, uh, Mr. Ouellette has already, uh, Mr. Uh, Mornell has already started and he's been working at um, at Wisdom uh, with our approval so that he get his feet wet and has been has been working out nicely. So the recommendation is for okay. is that Alan Warno from Grand Ave? Yep. Yeah. Is there any questions? Okay, I'll entertain entertain a motion to hire Alan Warno for the bus driver custodian position at Wisdom Middle High School. John, I move to retire Alan Warno. Yeah. John, she said that. Okay. Any more questions? If not, we'll vote in favor. All in favor. Okay, current opening. We, we still have some educational technician openings. We also have co uh, uh, interventionists that we have opening uh, in, in both schools as well. Um, in one bus driver custodian, uh, the second bus driver custodian at Wisdom. Okay, next is opening of bus kids that was advertised. So we had um, three buses uh, as is. So number three was a 2003 International, mileage 125,198. Number four is a 2005 Freightliner. Uh, Thomas Bill, mileage 129,419, and bus number seven was a 2007 international mileage 206,033 miles. Uh, so we did receive uh, quite a few bids. I will hand them to you. Okay. Um, you sell a bus, people. <laughs> Why are you bus? <laughs> Now, do you want me to read them as I get them? Okay. Uh, this bid is for bus number three for $250. Bus number four, $306. Bus number seven, $556. And uh, the bidder is uh, Greg Wallen. Okay. So do I have some time? You, you can, but you write them. I've read them. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 This bid is for bus number four, and it's $1,100. Okay. 
Mr. Horn and I'll we'll, we'll go with the paper copy until this turns on, and um, I'll switch over to that once uh, the desk comes on. Um, so we're obviously trying to plan for our next school year, and um, just as we had a lot of questions coming into this current school year, I got it, Kevin, for all this. Thank you. Um, we, we still have a lot of questions going into next school year. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to serve as the Aroostook County Superintendent uh, Representative to meet with the Commissioner. We meet every other week now, um, one superintendent per county. And we, you know, we get to ask questions and we get to hear the, the department plan for, um, for what they're planning for next year. And the department currently is working on their own plan, um, essentially, you know, what, what their recommendations are for the fall. We don't have that yet, um, but we're supposed to have it quite soon. Uh, but a lot of this is based on the conversations we've had and what we know to date. Uh, as in any plan that we present to you, please know that tomorrow I may come back and say, okay, we should consider some, here's something else for you to consider, and it's going to be a living, breathing thing. But uh, we are committed to ensuring a safe return to school in the fall and uh, really working hard to address the learning needs of our students. Your students are very fortunate as having been um, uh, schools that have remained open for the entire school year. We've had some, some small bumps in the road where we've had to uh, close down your schools for short periods of time because of, of some required quarantining. But for the most part, um, the state and the, the country uh, envy districts like this. Uh, because your kids have been in school, uh, which, is, which is amazing. Uh, so we, we need to highlight the fact that while we may have some slight learning loss uh, needs that need to be addressed, they're nowhere near where um, they are in, in areas of the country where kids are just now getting back to school since March of 2000. Uh, just over a year of not being in school is just, it's just amazing. So what will school look like in the fall? Um, it, 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 it's difficult to plan, but we know that um, there will be some form of safety measures that are still going to be in place. Uh, all indications point to uh, some level of social distancing, some level of face covering. Will they be exactly the same? We're not sure, but um, until the majority of our students now get vaccinated, it's going to be very difficult for things to change. Will it look different at the middle high school than the elementary school? If our middle and high school students will have access to the vaccine, but our elementary students will not, I, I, I couldn't say. But um, we, we definitely know that we, we need to support uh, our various learning models and stick with whatever guidelines that we're, we're told. Um, I wanna focus tonight's presentation on, on just four parts. Um, vaccination and testing efforts, safety measures and protocols, instructional models, and then addressing the learning loss. So starting with um, with our vaccination effort, uh, our staff have been have been heroes um, ever since they were told that they could get vaccinated. A very very large percentage of your SD33 staff um, went and got vaccinated. In fact, when I was at Rite Aid waiting for my appointment, I think there were uh, two Dr. Levac teachers uh, who had just got theirs and uh, two wisdom teachers who were about to get theirs behind me. So they were very excited to get their, their vaccines and did. Uh, so every employee has had the opportunity to access the vaccination and the majority have done so. Uh, and we continue to offer new opportunities. So when we have a student clinic, we tell staff, you can come get your, your vaccine at this clinic if you want. So we continue to, to push out that information. Uh, we've had school-based clinics for our students 16 and older. Uh, we, we had one with Northern Maine Medical Center um, where they, they did an off-site one and we had some students, very small numbers, but we had some students attend that. And then we had an in-school uh, clinic um, that was sponsored by St. John's Pharmacy uh, with the Pfizer vaccine and we had a couple of students access to that as well. Um, very soon, as soon as we have the FDA approval for the 12 and older, we're going to set up an in-school clinic for anyone 12 and above who wants to have that. And I believe that's set up for May 20. Whenever the second dose is supposed to be administered to the ones who got the first dose, 
um, we're, we're having a first dose vaccination clinic for anybody who wants that. Um, yep. Do you need parent consent? We do need parent consent. So what happens is uh, if we we make a, um, a, a permission slip from St. John's Pharmacy. We, we send that out via email. Uh, and we also put an alert system saying that um, please be on the lookout for your, your confirmation. And then um, we also send a link for the parents to register their child uh, as well. We cannot give the vaccination unless we have the permission form and the, the appointment made. So that's how we're setting that. Um, Number three, school nurses have requested the Binax Now Rapid uh, COVID-19 test and will conduct serial testing for school staff who have been identified as close contacts, close contacts, so unvaccinated staff can continue to work if they uh, test negative each morning before work. So we know that our vaccinated staff are fine once they're fully vaccinated. So if they are deemed close contacts, they won't have to quarantine anymore. That's the majority of our staff, but we still have some staff and we respect their wishes to not get vaccinated and that's fine but if they are unvaccinated and they're deemed a close contact we now have the ability to uh, have that employee if they're not symptomatic um, they wake up in the morning they're not symptomatic they can drive to work remain in their car uh, call the school nurse the school nurse will come out to their car give them a binax now rapid test the turnaround time is about 15 minutes if they take test negative they can go in and work for the day. And they would do that for the seven to 10 days that they're required to quarantine. As long as they test negative each morning, they can come to work. So that we um, we could potentially have somebody who would have to stay home now come to work. So that's a good thing. And then our school nurses have participated in a PCR pool testing program that's being offered um, as well. And our nurses right now are, are just learning about this. It's a brand new opportunity through the Department of Education. Uh, I'm not an expert in school testing, but what, from what I understand is you take a cohort and you um, you test random samples of people in that cohort. You pool their results together. Um, so you, you take those those uh, those random samples, put them together. If it's a negative test, it clearly identifies that your cohort is not impacted with COVID-19. If there is a positive, then you test everyone in that sample, everyone in that cohort. Uh, to see if you can identify who the, the positive person is. We're not sure if we're going to go that direction, but we're learning about it right now. I know the DOE just announced a second webinar that's being available for next week, so I pushed that out to your nurses um, today. So a lot of testing stuff, a lot of uh, vaccine stuff, and that's all good. I'm very excited to see if we have uh, large numbers of 12 and older year olds when we, when we are able to offer that. <clears throat> Uh, early indications point to the same safety measures being in place um, for, for next school year, uh, specific to the face masking at all times, indoors uh, uh, especially, the three to, foot, uh, three to six foot distancing, the hand hygiene, the monitoring of symptoms, and then staying home when sick. Um, one of these uh, there's a, that has a lot of discussion at the state level is number two, the three to six foot distancing. Uh, your schools in York and Cumberland County still cannot get all their students in school with that requirement. So the main CDC is working with the national CDC to see if there's going to be some relaxing of that three to six foot distancing. What a lot of people are asking is, if we have a face mask, can we just not do the required um, distancing? And I, I don't know that there's enough data around whether or not that's safe, but I know they are examining it. Uh, my recommendation to you all is whatever the main Department of Education throws out as guidelines, we follow those guidelines. There's going to be future grant monies attached to you adhering to that, so that would be my advice. Again, they, they pushed out nothing, but this is kind of the, the sense that we're getting um, is what's going to happen. Um, your instructional models will we'll, we'll keep all three models available um, and our three models are on-site hybrid and remote we have not done a lot of hybrid we did a, a small sampling of it it's not uh, everyone's favorite model so uh, folks would just assume be either be either all on-site or be all remote um, so we, we would we would stray from hybrid unless we really really that would be the only way we could get students in school for you guys you have plenty of room don't have overcrowded schools, so we could pretty much figure out how to, how to do that without a hybrid model. Um, and then we monitor how we go in and out of those. 
number one based on school spread uh, and infection rates if we have you know a, a huge outbreak in one of your schools obviously that would make a determination if we have a huge community spread and then if staff are available uh, is, is a big impact if you have four bus drivers in the district and all four are required quarantine I don't know how your kids are getting to school, so we may have to consider going remote while your bus drivers are all uh, in quarantine. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it could happen. With a regard to instructional models, this year you offer school choice, and the uh, commissioner said loud and clear on our last meeting um, last week uh, that schools no longer have to offer school choice. As, uh, as an option, and what I mean by that is you no longer have to tell your parents, you can choose to have your kids remote, or you can choose to have your kid in, in school, and we'll accommodate both of you. Um, you no longer have to do that. Um, in fact, for, for, for me and your team, we've discussed this over and over, and at the very least, um, we are saying your elementary levels, pre to six, and your middle level, seven to eight, we are hoping you will support this plan to not offer remote learning to those grade levels as a choice. If we all have to be remote, we'll all go remote. If we all have to be in school, everyone should be in school. And especially these grade levels because the younger their students are, we know the harder they have time with remote learning. We need them in school. We need to start bringing back some form, sort of normalcy. And um, the first step is just stepping into the school and that's a school of life. Um, with regards to 9 to 12, um, I am currently working with the other Aroostook County superintendents on an Aroostook County model to try to sustain um, remote learning. What, what we would be asking you is to not require your wisdom teachers to have to balance remote and in-school instruction next year. It's too difficult. They did it like rock stars this year, but to, to ask them to do that going on beyond this year is not sustainable. And we would just like our wisdom teachers to handle the kids that are in school. And kids that truly want to be on a, on a remote learning plan, uh, we'd like them to apply to see if they would have consideration to do that. They would be based on if they were successful in the past. And then if they were accepted, um, we would look at this model for Rooster County where we would offer our teachers to develop online courses, very similar to what the college model is, where they develop an online course and then monitor that course. Um, it would be asynchronous learning, so the kids could basically um, tap into that whenever they, they, they their schedule affords them to. It wouldn't be them following a set schedule where they have to sit in front of a screen and Zoom with the teacher. They could do their online coursework based on their schedule. Right now, uh, in speaking with a couple of Aroostook County superintendents, we've sent out surveys of who, which kind of students would be interested in remote learning 9 through 12 next year. Your results for wisdom are zero right now. Zero students have expressed interest. Very low uh, in the other two schools as well. Very low. I spoke with Holton today. Very low. So if we have low numbers, my recommendation <coughs> tonight is we do not offer school choice for any grade level next year. Um, the only ones that should have maybe an option, 9 through 12, if the Aroostook County program happens. Doesn't look like that's probably going to happen based on the low numbers. I'm going to know more tomorrow. Giselle and I will be meeting with the Aroostook County superintendents, and we'll know a little bit more. But your numbers right now for wisdom are zero. So um, I, I think we can safely say that if you approve this plan, all of our kids are coming back to school. Keep in mind that parents always have a school option. So if they're not happy sending their kids to school, we hate to lose them. And, and I'm not saying I, I, I want to lose any, but they have the homeschool option and they can apply to the main virtual academy or the main connection academy, which are the two state approved um, online schools. And those are folks who know how to do this because that's what they do uh, and, and they're experts at it. And so we would um, encourage parents to do that if they truly don't want their kids to um, so, how many families do we have? How many kids do we have right now that are still remote? Do we have any Very low. I think Cheryl, you have three. Just three. And well, six and a half. Six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple kids that are remote for some of all come in the afternoon. Uh, coming, uh, working their way back into a full time school. 
Um, we're going to be working to address the learning loss um, as, as you've approved already uh, some intervention positions for this district that we're going to use some extra funds to fund. Uh, I think those are going to be very beneficial. And what we, I'd like to do is a year from now come back to this board and say, here's some data around what our intervention programs have done. Uh, we're going to be offering summer school. Uh, we're going to be offering after school tutorial. We're going to be offering vacation school. So harvest break for wisdom. We're going to might be offering some, some intervention during harvest break, uh, February break, April break. If the more we can recapture this learning, um, we're definitely going to do it. We're, we've upped the pay uh, for teachers who uh, want to do this. Uh, it's not very attractive to do this type of work after a COVID pandemic year for $20 an hour. So we've said, how about $40 an hour? And it, it, it sparks some interest. And again, that's not coming out of your local budget. That's uh, extra funds that we're using to be able to support that through our projects. Um, we, we do realize there has been some learning loss we're not quite sure what that is. So uh, the next year is going to be really looking at um, using this year as a new baseline. So you know this, this post uh, this post pandemic year, um, outside of what happened last spring where nobody was in school, we've set some new baseline, and then we're going to see from year to year how we're doing to uh, you know close those gaps. We always have gaps, but we know that. Um, the kids that have totally um, disconnected, which is not a lot, but you still have some, um, it, it definitely won't be a challenge to, to get them whole again. Um, our targeted approach, as I mentioned, uh, after school learning labs, uh, summer and vacation school option, and then expand our in school intervention. Um, some schools are choosing to go with coaching, and some schools are choosing to go with intervention. Your principals, um, in looking at the size of the schools, the size and scope, it's more about the intervention uh, than the coaching, and I, and I think we should honor that. So hopefully we get um, some good applicants for those positions and and, and, and attack that next school year. Um, we're very hopeful that a regular school experience will happen sooner than later. I think we're getting there when you, when you talk about no face masks outside and and, and trying to get outside as much as we can, and then maybe uh, easing some of the distancing next year with uh, three to six feet. Hopefully, some of that will happen. Uh, and, and as people are getting more and more vaccinated, I think we're, we're definitely going to get there. But until then, we're going to have to learn how to live with this thing. I think the fear is now, uh, the fear that we had a year ago is now been answered with a lot of data and a lot of, you know, we have a lot of knowledge about how this virus works. and what it does and, and how to you know stay steer clear of it. Uh, and I think it, it's not so much fear anymore. Now it's more about okay, how can we work within this framework to, to make sure that our kids are getting the best experience possible. So that's my presentation and I'm just hoping that we can all uh, approve this plan as our initial plan for coming back in the fall. Are there any questions for Ben? If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the plan for school year 2021 22. Is there a second? Any more questions? If not, we'll take a vote. In favor? Okay, next is. Novell, is that how you pronounce it? Novell, novel, yeah. <laughs> okay, Novell Energy Solutions. Um, this actually, Kevin is, is actually the point person on this. Uh, Kevin was uh, able to connect with uh, Novel Industry Solutions. They're the ones who are building the, um, the solar farm in Frenchville um, over this summer. And um, essentially, Kevin's uh, objective for connecting with them was to find out if their um, electrical trades um, group could somehow connect with the um, with the company to, to get some learning experiences around uh, sustainable energy. And uh, Kevin's going to have some news about that at, at a future meeting uh, in what Novel's offering um, to his students. But 
in the meantime, novel is, is looking or novella is looking for subscribers um, to their to their program. Uh, essentially, the way that a subscription to a a, a, a solar farm is, um, they the, that company Novell has looked at your two year average of energy usage in all three buildings. So they they looked at how much energy in all the buildings you you typically use uh, for a two year cycle, and they have um, they have proposed um, you to purchase. X amount of, of um, solar power, solar uh, energy power from their uh, from their grid, and in, in comparison with what you typically use. And the way that works is because you are now a subscriber to that, you would be generating energy that goes back into um, into the grid to provide power. So the sun is coming down to those panels, creating energy. You guys are making electricity for the same power. And Versant Power is going to give you credits for making electricity for them. Um, those credits, uh, obviously, uh, are, are the offset of what you typically pay in, in payments. But you're going to turn around and take those um, those savings, and you're going to pay Novell Industry uh, a subscription fee, which they've um, they've calculated at 15% savings to what you typically pay for power. So. You're, 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 you're making energy, you're paying these people who are who are the ones who own the, the solar panels, and the projection is that you will have a 15% savings over a 10 year period. So first thing that I did is when we had a meeting, uh, Lucy and Kevin and I had a meeting with, uh, with, with one of their representatives. My first question was, what's the catch? What's the catch? There's got to be a catch. And, and essentially he said, no, there's, there's no catch. You know, there, there's these solar farms are going up everywhere and, and um, we projected what you use. Uh, we calculated that to be what you need to, to own in our farm and you're going to pay us and it's going to be a 15% cost. So I, I reached out to our attorney, uh, Drummond and Woodson, I spoke with Adam Police and he's the, um, he's the, the lead attorney for their public utilities law practice group. And um, he basically said, no, he says, these are happening everywhere. He says, I'm working on an LLB deal right now. There's other schools that are being approached. And he says, it's not, it's not a catch. He says, there's just two things that you need to be mindful of. He says, number one, he says, there's so many of these happening across the nation. Uh, there's a good chance that a lot of these are going to be squashed because the, 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 the U.S. government can't keep up with uh, how many of these are popping up. And, and what it's doing to the, the fossil fuel side of energy production. He said, so a lot of these are going to be, um, are going to be axed. And he says, this one could be a project that never happens. He says, but just be mindful that this, you might be signing up for something that never happens. He says, there's nothing, there's no loss for you guys. You, you're not signing a contract and handing over money in advance. It's just, it won't happen. He says, the second thing he said, um, I always recommend to my, my my clients that they don't subscribe to 100% of your usage. And the reason he says they, they he recommends that is what if you make some changes in your school that now um, provide you with some, some uh, reduction in energy costs? They've quoted you for two years of, of usage where you were less uh, energy efficient, and now you've become more energy efficient through changing lights or, or changing windows or whatever, and um, the credits you are getting back, you're, you're going to end up losing them because you're not paying out as much as they had anticipated you would have to. So by becoming more energy efficient, um, you're going to lose those credits at the end of the year because you're not going to be able to use them up um, based on, on your usage. He says, so I recommend that you do a, an 80% deal versus a 100% deal. So go based on 80% of your usage. He said, you're not going to save as much in the long run, but you're guaranteed not to lose out if and when you become more energy efficient. And he said he would be willing to talk to you about you know, how he's, he's guiding uh, in this uh, at any time that you, you would want to speak to him. Uh, but I did reach out to Novell and ask them if they would revise and the, 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 the Agreement that we have right now is for 80%, not for 100%, per your um, your attorney's um, suggestion. I have presented this to Mattawasa School Department. 
Um, they were leery to agree to this because um, Madawaska also has another solar farm that is looking to be built in Grand Isle. Saint David. Saint David. And if they have a, 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 a something being built in their community, they want to see if maybe there's an offer that's going to be a little bit better for them if they go with that. So they're kind of holding to see if that, uh, if, if anything comes of that. I also presented to 27. Um, they're a little more skeptical because um, they, they just this is the first proposal, and they're wondering if any other company would come up and give a, another proposal. So both Madawaska and 27 kind of tasked me with kind of looking into um, other opportunities. I wrote to Versant Power and asked them if they could point you in the direction of how I would find out how many solar farms there are in Maine and which ones we could have access to. And they basically pointed me to a website on their uh, to a web page on their on, the, on their site, and there are. Um, I think I had counted 480 solar panel opportunities in Maine. And when you go through the, the site, it doesn't tell you where they're located. So I have no idea which ones are part of the Maine Public Service District, which is our district here. Um, most of most of Aroostook County, almost almost to Bangor. Uh, it would have to be on our on our grid in order for us to take advantage. So short from calling all 460 contacts. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know how to call a competitor or who a competitor even was would be. So I, I'm kind of at a loss to how to how to proceed that way. Um, so I know that's not a really good sales pitch to you, um, but I, I just want to be fair with that. You know, right now Madawak and 27 are not proceeding with this until they have a little more data to compare. Um, all, all I can share with you is what I've received. Unless Kevin, you have more information you'd like to share. Uh, I just know that Novell wasn't the only company that I communicated with initially. Um, there was Solar, the Standard Solar, and they too offered 15 percent. And I've got several other solicitations in the AO, other uh, farms, and 15 or 10 percent is what they offered. Initially, uh, Novell was offering only 10%, but I, I talked them into getting 15 because that's what Standard Solar was going to offer initially. Um, so it, it's traction, you know. So how soon do we have to give them an, an answer? Or? Well, their farm is going up this June, and doesn't mean that we're operating off this farm because there's other farms. So we could be operating off the Ashland farm or Mars Mar Hill or Fort Fairfield farm. It doesn't really make a difference. Energy is being created, we've got the Versant great, and Versant is all the way, all the rest of it. So it really makes no difference. However, the subscribers, if they sell their plate of subscribers and you don't talk on, you're out of luck. So you have to wait till the next bus comes around from another vendor and will they pay you 15%? One of the concerns shared by uh, Madawaska was that this agreement that I shared with you is a 10-year agreement, and so you're, you're walking for 10 years. Their point was that's a long time, you know. So I reached out to our contact and I said, "Hey, what about a five-year agreement?" And he says, "We would consider that." He said, "And you didn't know this, Kevin. If if you and Kevin Lavois, so me and Kevin, would be willing to do a testimonial for them, um, basically publicizing their." He wants to come with us, so we're, 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 we have to help them by, you know, saying some nice things about their company. I do want to do that for a five-year agreement versus a ten-year agreement. Um, it, it gives us less time to be locked in, so we can see if there are true statements. Um, so I did want to share that with you as well. And and also to mention, we need to go ten years. However, they were willing to say to us that. They'd be willing to look after the 10 years, roll another 10. So if you are getting the 15%, they're willing to, you're continuing to get 15% for another 10 years. But usually a farm, they say, you know, after X number of years starts to degrade for your, because the panels get old, uh, but they were willing to commit for the 10 years. But our contract is 10, we 
I don't know enough beyond what I shared with you um, to help guide you into a recommendation. Um, I, I feel confident that I spoke to an attorney who said there's no catch. You know, these things can work. Um, he says, you know, a couple safeguards, and that's why the 80% was recommended um, will help. Then he said, be ready for it not to happen. And that's what happened. Um, but he didn't say, oh, no, this is this is a uh, pyramid scheme and, and you know, run, run for the hills. You know, so that 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 makes me feel kind of comfortable. Um, I think these solar companies are trying to do it's it's free energy, right? It's the sun is generating the energy, and it's just to assure that we're reducing the footprint. Yeah. And the more people get on, the more it helps, and the more that you know, you're, you're less reliant on the fossil fuels. And yes, of course, the people that are in charge of fossil fuels are going to be all against it because it's cutting into our pocket money. Yeah. But we, we did find this in the legislature, so be mindful of that. In 2018, the state of Maine signed into the legislature that they were allowing solar farms, a percentage of solar farms, to reduce the There's no money here. There's no, no risk 
aside from saving, which is not a risk. And we're eliminating or reducing our carbon footprint. I'm just concerned that there's so many companies there. Like the attorney said that this one could crash and burn. Um, but there'd be no risk to us if it did, right? Yeah, there's no risk. I can explain how that works. Uh, once they're implemented, they're given the green light by the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission. Then they've got the green light to build. So no one's going to take back their cards and say, sorry, you can't play the same one. If others are trying to get in, they will say, you may not be able to because we have given so many allowances to get into the grid of what the state of Maine can offer. Okay? Uh, and one good question somebody asked me one day is, okay, what if a solar grid goes bad? Where are you at? That's not a problem. We still receive our energy from work. We're not shutting down these massive switch and getting energy elsewhere. They're creating their energy, they're feeding it to person, but we're getting credit from it. So it just means that if that should happen, they send us a notification. If they this month, don't pay us, pay person. Okay, because we have to mitigate the, the system. But I asked them, they're from Minnesota, they said they got the same energy, the same amount of snowfall, same conditions. It, it hasn't happened to us. We are still producing energy. So we asked to see if it was a dual cell, the top and bottom, so we can get the <coughs> energy from the snow and gain another 3% energy. So we're looking to see if they can't do that as well to get that more sand from the sun, because we don't always get the sun in the winter as well. So most of our energy accumulation will happen in the summers, you know, May, June, July, August, and then you'll see that it tapers off, but yet the average, we're still getting 15% no matter what. And that's 600,000 over a full 320 years. That's if all of BUSC participates. If the other two schools say, no, we're out, we don't want to do it, then that savings is less because our footprint is less. But to be very frank, if we say yes and we go for it, it's, it's our check. They have calculated the human ground, they calculated, you know, what, what, because there are some months that produce more energy than others, you know, you're saying July, August, uh, if they can, they can figure out exactly, um, you know, what, what, how much credit you get based on that, how much your, how much electricity is being developed, and the subscription payment, the subscription payment changes based on production. So you're always at 15% less, even in the less energy producing months. Yeah. I don't need an answer, but I'd like kind of said, you know, it's just the sooner this board knows, the sooner we can walk in on, you know, our subscription. And, and I know that they are approaching uh, quite a few businesses uh, in the area. Um, and as Kevin said, the businesses are not getting offered the 15% that we are being offered. And that I credit to Kevin saying that. And they're willing to do five years. Connor said, if Kevin and I are willing to do testimonials, they will consider a five year agreement. 15%, five years. It won't be 15% because we've got 80% of the total usage. So it's going to be more like 12 or 13. Okay, great. So one fifty one percent of the board. What do you say? I'm going to five years. Five years, uh, whatever the percentage is at eighty percent. Uh, I, I just think if we're not out any money, yeah, if there's nothing to lose, we're not paying up front anything. I think I I'm okay with going for five years and then renewing, renewing after that. I'm Yeah. Yeah. So your lawyer, our lawyer is going to look into this and make sure there's no hidden fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're not going to get a bill in the mail for you owing eighty thousand dollars after five years because you didn't get this or do. And that's what Adam said. He says if your board is not close, is I want to work at the company and make sure that everything is good on your end. So that there's no there's no wolf to cheat you. Yeah. Did you want to Yes. Did you Okay. Uh, I think we have one more question. Sorry. <laughs>
So that means we don't get a Versant bill then. But we're not paying a Versant bill and paying. No, you're getting credit for Versant paying you. And we pay. And you pay Novell. Novell. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Much like what the farmer was doing. You see, like the farmer. Yeah, I know. I have a great, great farmer. That's a special decision. You'll get the creating energy being capitalized, and Versant is paying them, and they're applying it towards the expenditure that they're generating in the city. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so is there any more questions? We're good for five years. Just for the morning. I'll entertain a motion. Can I ask, ask a question? If we go to five years, can we renew after five? Um, or are we stuck with just five? That would be negotiable. Why would we take that? Yeah, no negotiation. Um, this board is still more comfortable with five. If they approve five tonight, do you adjust it? I communicate with them to see if we can renew, you know, at that point. I, I won't commit, but at least it gives us an idea of the application for the long journey. Yeah, if they were if they were willing to do it ten and stuff at ten at some time, I would assume people would feel right. like it was But in the long run it's money in the box. Yep. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to um go with Novell for five years. And is there a second? Awesome. Any more questions? Okay, Ms. Cal, can we vote in favor of doing this? All in favor. Okay. Next on the agenda is okay. We need a motion to enter into executive session to discuss the employment of employees pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 405. Six A. I'll need a motion to go to executive session. Johnson Lane. Okay. Everybody in favor of going into executive session. Okay. I think what we'll do is we'll set out one more spot so that everybody can have new like this.
to approve the nominations for second or third year probationary teachers. In favor? And next uh, we will need a motion to approve the nomination of uh, for continuing contract and other district festivals. So, Lena. Second, Josh. Okay, we'll take a vote in favor. Okay, all in favor. And uh, next is uh, to approve the extension of administrator contract. Jean. Second, Josh. In favor? All in favor. Okay, next on the agenda is the budget workshop number three. Lucy. Thank you. I will have the budget documents in front of you. Um, to remind you that last time we met, um, we had we would have been going to um, the local for a hundred, almost 131000 extra and additional local. So that's where we were at at the time. So since then, um, I was able to reduce the overall budget. So, and I was able to, there's a couple of places that I had made an error. I had duplicated the request. Um, I also adjusted the the uh, anticipated carry forward from this current year to next year. I had to last and lower that down to 475,000. Uh, same with the school nutrition program. Um, I'm not anticipating as, as high of, of a new increase as I had anticipated. Um, and I am reflecting an additional revenue from the sale of laptops. Remember, we, uh, at one of the meetings in, I think it's January or February, we approved that we sell some laptops. I'm, re I'm reflecting that in the revenue side. So, at initial glance, and this is before we met with the finance committee uh, before this meeting, we would have been going to the voters uh, with a reduced, reduced additional local to 91000 um, we met with the finance committee just before this meeting, and the finance committee recommended that we reduce that amount. Uh, and we were able to identify some expenses that we're going to be able to take out of the budget, proposed budget, and fund possibly through the ESER funds, the ESER grant, uh, and then bring this budget to uh, 
referendum and ask for only uh, up to 25,000 in additional local, which would mean about a 2.5% increase to the local tax. Uh, that would mean that we would reduce this proposed budget by an additional 66 or $65,000 to accomplish that. Uh, and we were able to identify some, uh, some areas for some, some uh, items that we can remove. So if there is no questions, I would recommend uh, a total budget of five million two nineteen eight nine seven. And that would bring you to the level that you would be comfortable taking to the local. So five million two nineteen eight ninety seven would be the proposed total budget that would include everything in, in the top end. Your Honor, you were the only one that wasn't here for our finance committee. Um, one of the conversations we had was um, we've offered salary increases to everyone this year, and uh, to expect a zero percent increase when you're raising salary, raising salary, it's got to come from somewhere else. So I think we, we were the board was in agreement that a small increase would probably justify just because we are offering those salary increases. We're able to shift a few technology items back into ESSER funds to do it, and, and I think uh, it's the, the right choice. Are there questions for me, please? So we need to a motion to approve uh, this budget as Lucy presented it. I make the motion to approve the budget of the trustee Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Any questions for Lucy? Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay. Is there anything else? Uh, one thing that I just want to just float by you, um, we're, we're going to have to have a meeting to sign warrants. Um, and right now, tentatively, uh, until Lucy works with legal counsel um, to, to figure out exactly, in order to meet all the, the requirements, um, I'd be looking for the 24th. Um, Lucy, is that Monday? Monday the 24th. Um, it, it wouldn't be a long, a long meeting. Um, we, we could do it early in the morning, uh, the summer mornings, or we could do it in the evening. Uh, so I'll be reaching out to you sooner than or Jackie will to confirm um, that date. If that is actually the one that is selected. Um, is there anybody here that like can't do a morning meeting. Is, do we have like a six forty five or seven a.m. Oh my god. That's what I would prefer. I'll be prepared to do that. Or would you rather stick to an evening where we all together and totally up to you guys? You're up at three in the afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> I had to do a morning, the evenings are just more difficult. So if if you do a seven a.m. it wouldn't take like 15 minutes. Okay. What's that? Our girls are going to be so they have to be here and stay with that. Well, if need be, I'll say, okay. So, tentatively, if you just, you know, Monday the 24th at 7 a.m., and I'll have Jackie confirm with you guys if that can be that thing. And what we would be looking to do, um, if we can post on, if we can post a warrant on that date, um, we'd be looking to have a a public uh, presentation of the budget. Um, this year, there's not a requirement to have a, a public meeting with a vote. It's just a presentation, and we'd be looking to do that on June first, and then we'd be going to the polls on June eighth uh, for for the referendum vote. If everything lines up, for the start of June what are you calling it? A presentation? It's a budget presentation. So we don't need the whole... 
I, I think referendum. Maybe we won't need a vote at a time. We do need a referendum. We don't need oh, a hearing. Okay, the hearing. Yeah. So just June first would be the budget hearing. Yeah. Would be the a version of the budget hearing, but mainly for information. No vote. Information. Jack will be on the list. Yeah. Yeah. What time is that? Yeah. 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 I'll have John in the Okay. Okay, we'll do the to adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, take care of your phone. Yes. This is not an important one. Thank you. 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 Thank you.